What's going on guys, The Inhuman Beatdown, I'm back with another first impression. Now, I've said at the first, at the first episode of that this, this, uh, words, that this series is about giving my first impressions about games I've completed on stream. Now, that's not wholly entirely true. I think it's kind of a telling sign of a first impression if I quit the game and I don't want to play it anymore. I think that's a telling sign of it. As such, that's where we find ourselves today with Kamen Rider Climax Scramble ZO. Even though the English box art calls it Kamen Rider Climax Scramble without the ZO part. It's weird, I don't get it, but I think in Japan it's officially recognized as Kamen Rider Climax Scramble ZO because we really had to force that ZO was the main character on this. This is an action brawler game uh, for the Switch, and is the newest line of the Kamen Rider Climax series. Although I hesitate to put it in that same series, because that means it has to rival such games as what I think is the best Kamen Rider game, that being Super Climax Heroes. It had the a, a way faster, a way faster uh, a fighting style and way more characters, and already you're starting to see the negatives of this game. First off, I'm going to go ahead and get this one out of the way. Don't buy the English version. Now, I bought the English version because I heard, because I was, not I heard, I was told, because I know there's a story mode for this game. The reason I skipped over Climax Fighters is because I was told there is no story mode for that game, just a bunch of missions. So, I, for this one, I sought out to get the English copy, and I paid probably more than I should have for the game. Don't waste your money getting the English version. It's not worth your time and effort to know what the fuck is going on in this story mode. I will be very blunt. This story mode is very cut and paste. I don't even think it's a spoiler to say, shocker, Shadow Moon is behind everything. He's altering people's minds and sending the writers to kill Zio and guys. I have literally described half of the Kamen Rider movies by saying Shadow Moon was behind it. Anyways, that's not really what makes it bad. The story is bland, but the worst part is you're not allowed to play as any other character aside from Zio and Guys. And technically, you can't even play as Guys unless you're playing as two player. That's the only benefit, is that story mode can be played co op. But you're locked in as Zio and Guys, even though you unlock other characters. And yes, you must play story mode to unlock every other character. Ugh. But yeah, my biggest gripe with that is you can't play as anyone else. You can't even change the difficulty of a mission until you've already beaten it. That is a huge detriment. Considering the game isn't, well, very hard. This game is clearly t uh, made with a kid in mind, giving you the idea of very kid-friendly controls and even uh, motion controls for fun times. I never bothered trying the motion controls because, personally, I don't really like motion controls. So, yeah. We're not off to a strong start. The only praise I can give this game is it's got a decent roster featuring pretty much all the writers from Heisei Phase 1 uh, and pretty much all the characters from Heisei Phase 2 up to Zio come with their secondary writer. This means Double and Axel, uh, O's and Birth, uh, who came after O's? Forze and Meteor, Who the fuck was after Forza and Meteor? Oh, Wizard and Beast. I actually don't know if Gaim's in this game. Huh. I guess he's in the game. Maybe that's the other one I'm missing. I'm fairly sure he's in the game, but now that I've just thought about it. A anyways, the point is, all of them and their secondaries are in there. And including guys and uh, guys and Zio, of course. And added bonus, if you get the game updated, which isn't hard to do, just literally update it. You don't need a special account to update it. 
you get a special uh, another form for Zio, which is the double form and woes was i don't know how to pronounce his name as a playable character although the biggest detriment to this is and what happens with every common rider game all the new characters zeo guys and woes basically suck in comparison to the rest of the characters not that they're bad mechanic well they are bad mechanic wise they're not bad from like a tier list standard because i hate tier lists they're bad in the fact that they're very repetitious because their move set is lacking shall we say in the game you are basically given the ability to use what is called a rider arts this could be a very special attack that allows you to change into a mid-season transformation or launch a mid-season attack that was a very weird way to word that let me give an example for double it allows him to swap out with uh philip allowing him to become uh fang joker with other characters, say, like, uh, Build, he can either become Tank Tank or uh, Rabbit Rabbit. Other characters, like Ghost, will activate his... Uh, uh, what the fuck is that called? Uh, it's not... Not Mugen. His other mid-season, the uh, other weird belt. Uh, and he'll launch an attack with that, but he doesn't stay in that form. The other thing is when they activate their super mode, for lack of a better word, because I don't remember what the game actually calls it, they transform into their strongest form, not counting movie transformations. So build will turn into genius mode, uh, double turns into extreme, you get the idea. Zeo guys and woes do not have these features. Woes kind of, kind of does, his writer arts being that he turns into shinobi. Well, he activates Shinobi for his belt, and that's the closest you get as a special for that. Aside from that, Guys and Zio are very limited in their movesets, and that makes it even worse that you're stuck playing them all through story mode. The action for the combat in the arena is decent, but I still think the Climax Fighters games, not Climax Fighters, Climax Heroes games had a fast, had a faster paced combat to it. It's not helped that the, com the combo system for this is very limited, not allowing for a lot of possibilities and a lot of moves an example being zeo's uh zeo's build form is very hard to angle for his attack to hit combo juggling is also not a thing since after you deal so much damage to an opponent they enter a down state where they cannot be harmed it very much slows down the battle the only positive i can really get that give that is it's cool to have a four person free for all and the chaos that ensues from fighting each other but ultimately unless you've got friends and you're really die hard common rider uh fans i'm gonna have to say give this game a pass i really wish i liked this game more than i did but the boring ass story mode and the fact that i'm locked into playing zeo to unlock everyone and the fact that zeo is so bare bones compared to the other riders just makes it a chore to play the game and honestly, the combat of the game is kind of slow and not that enjoyable. It's decent enough, but I've played better. I've gone through the entire Musu series of games at this point, and I've played the better part of the uh, Climax Heroes franchise. There are better games. This sadly is not one of them. I think it's better than the original Climax Heroes, but that's not saying much. But yeah, my first impressions of this is... It's fun, but it is very much a chore if you want to unlock all the characters to have even more fun. It's how much are you willing to put yourself through it to really have fun. Like, at this point, I still want to unlock x so I can play as him, but do I really feel like I want to go through the rest of the story so I can do that? Anyways... That's going to be it for now, guys. So until next time, I'll catch you all later. Asta.